Gunnerman Group is a go. Yes! <laughs> Not just a startup, an upstart. <sighs> Gotta get going. Gotta be good. Good? Good. Growth is the goal. How do we do that? I talked to UPS. They'll help us out. New technology, smart advice. We focus on the business, and they take care of the logistics. UPS. Good going. We get good? That's great. 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 <laughs> I love logistics. <laughs>Welcome to another edition of Z360. I'm your host, David Suntup. Coming up on this edition, women's soccer player Lonnie Smith teaches me how to kick a soccer ball. A former Akron football assistant coach comes back to InfoCision Stadium, and the women's tennis team opens up its new outdoor courts. Last weekend was an important one for the Akron women's tennis program. The team opened up its new outdoor facility on campus. So we're out here celebrating the opening of the new University of Akron Tennis Center. This is an exciting day, the beginning of a new chapter for our tennis program, and I was just delighted to be a part of uh, hitting a few balls on the opening of the court. So we're excited about it. It's a beautiful day. It was just wonderful to be out here. Thank you for being here for this really exciting event uh, to open up our beautiful on-campus tennis center. Uh, in an area of Akron that hasn't had a lot of new development on this side of Exchange, uh, this is a really welcome site uh, to this part of campus. And uh, certainly want to give uh, our head tennis coach, Brandon Padgett, uh, a lot of credit for the way this looks and feels and uh, just everything that it's going to do, uh, not only for his tennis program and, and continuing to build that, uh, but for the entire university as well. As Tom said, this is definitely a great moment for our program. Uh, you know, kind of a new a new beginning for this program, I think, and uh, we're going to move forward very, very well with this. We're excited about the ability to really, truly develop our players at a much higher rate with this facility being on campus. So, again, thank you to everyone for coming out. We're really excited about uh, getting started today. Jack Langle is an Akron alum and a former assistant coach for the Zips. He also coached at Marshall, taking over the Herd program following the plane crash in 1970. This past weekend, Langle returned to InfoCision Stadium to see two programs that have meant a lot to him. I, I, I became, I went to school here as a walk-on at Akron University. And then I played four years with a scholarship. And then they made me the freshman coach. And then I went to ROTC and, and I had to go to Fort Bragg, so I went and became a uh, backfield coach for the post football team. And then I came back to Akron, they made me on the varsity staff as the end coach. And then from there I went to Barberton High School for one year, then I went to Cornell in the Ivy League for three years, Heidelberg College for two years, and then I took the Marshall job. And I got the job when I was 29 years old. And there's an old Chinese proverb that says, if you're ever given anything of value, you have a moral obligation to pass it on to others. And I thought, well, here's my opportunity to give back to football what it gave to me to be a head coach at the age of 29. And that's why I went to Marshall. Well, I mean, I was young. I was in eighth grade, I believe, when the, when the tragedy occurred at Marshall. And my dad, knowing coaches uh, that were involved with that staff, and. Uh, uh, that being the fraternity that he was in of coaches in the coaching profession, it was a very difficult time for everyone in West Virginia. You know, you may be a Marshall grad or a West Virginia grad, but you're a West Virginian first. And I think that was a situation where everybody pulled together uh, and were able to help, you, help each other. And I know Coach Jack Lingle, who became the head coach at Marshall, was able to get to my father and put in what they call the split back veer, the veer offense that my father was running at West Virginia. Uh, they were able to put in and use at Marshall and actually won a game that next year. So I, I saw that Bobby Bowden was up at West Virginia and he was running the Houston veer. Now the Houston veer is two wide right receivers out, so the defense would have to put two wide receivers out. Now it's nine on nine. And then what you do with the end and the tackle, you block down, and you, all, you don't have to be great linemen. You know, to get a good offensive lineman, it takes two years to build. Well, here now, all I had to do was have these tough kids get them in great shape, and they could cut block, cut block, cut block. 
And then the quarterback come down an option whether he pitches or keeps the ball. So that offense fit our, our, our team. So Bobby invited us up, took my offensive staff up there. And we, we stayed three days. We watched practice in the morning and the afternoon. And then we also then watched film from midnight to about one or two in the morning for three days. And we put the offense together, simplified it. And Frank Signetti, the quarterback coach, taught it to us. And, uh, uh, and then we went down in, in two days, implemented it for a spring game following uh, uh, two more weeks we had the spring game to play the varsity. But Bobby, well, if you saw the movie and you saw the players came in the, the locker room and they had green crosses on the helmet, Bobby had those green crosses on. Bobby was he made that, and if you know Bobby Bowden, you know he put those crosses on there to honor Marshall University on his football helmets. And Bobby is who you see, he's a lay minister and one of the great coaches in the country. I love him and he had as much to do with what we did at, at Marshall University and bringing it back as anyone else. You know, Coach Engel and I talk at least once or twice a year. He comes in for a football game. Uh, I've known him all the way back since I was in junior high school. I was in middle school when he was the head coach at Marshall. But he, and he's more of my dad's contemporary than mine. But since I've come back to, to Akron, uh, and he being an Akron graduate, it, it's kind of fun that we've come back. He spoke at our, at our coaching clinic. Uh, he, he sends me a, a note uh, once or twice a year. Uh, and it's nice to just be a part of, uh, of the university knowing that Jack is also a part of this university. Terry's doing a terrific job. He's running the style of offense and it's taken him a couple years to recruit to that style of offense because he has to have specific players to execute it, a good quarterback, some good wide receivers. And I think he's showing that this year that he's, he's building his base and getting it fundamentally read, ready and he's got a great staff. And uh, I, I think that uh, they're ready to take it to the next level. So I'm very, very proud of what he's doing here for my alma mater. Women's soccer player Lonnie Smith set a single season program record with nine goals last year. I caught up with the senior captain to find out her secrets for scoring. David Stunt's up here with women's soccer senior captain Lonnie Smith. The goal for today is for Lonnie to teach me how to shoot. So Lonnie, what's the biggest challenge for someone when shooting on goal who hasn't played much soccer before? Um, I think the biggest challenge is trying to keep your toe pointed down. Most people like to kick with their toe because it, it's easier, but you get more power and accuracy when you shoot with your laces. What kind of shooter do you think you are? Um, I think I like, I like to shoot from range, but I more so like to get up close and kind of use the inside of my foot and mm. kind of take, like fake the goalie out and kind of go at her at speed. You lead the team in shots. What's been the key for you this season with firing a lot of shots? Um, I think my teammates just getting me the ball and good opportunities and We've been working on attacking quickly and counterattacks, and they've just been doing a good job at getting me the ball and getting me in position to score. Penalty kicks. What do you try to focus on there when you're one-on-one -on -one with the goalie? I focus on just getting it low and in the corner and kicking as hard as I can. Ready to go demonstrate some shots on goal? I'm ready. Let's do it. What are you trying to look at before you shoot? You see, Clary, you want to see where the open spaces are, so I'm going to try to shoot it to the left corner. And then you want to get your approach kind of a couple feet back so you can get your approach and run up. How much of this is a guessing game for you? Um, I don't know. I've been playing soccer so long, so I'm kind of just have a feel for it. I don't really think about it. I just look up, see where I want to shoot it, and try to put it there. How much film do you watch on opposing goalies before games? Um, we do almost before every game. Um, Vernon, I know before every game he tells us what the goalie's like, if she's strong in the air or good with her hands. So. That helps a lot. Well, what are some of Claire's strengths? Uh, Claire, Claire is just really strong in punching balls out and just directing our defense. And um, I think she's just like the core of our defense. So wait, are you actually going to kick it to the upper left corner, or are you trying to oh. play some mind games? Well, I don't know. That's that's a good point. We'll find out. Well, let's find out right now. Go ahead. Ready? Still warming her up. I think you got a tougher one in you. I mean, you scored nine goals last year. You tied a program single season record. There you go. There's the tougher shot. Yes. So you have faith in me? I do. I have a lot of you faith. You do? Whoa. All right. Are you left footed or right footed? I'm a righty. Okay. So you said when I first talked with you, do not use the toe. No. Use the inside. Like inside or laces. Or laces. Yeah. And so you want to you get your whole knee, yeah. chest, like kind of in a straight line over the ball 
and your last step wants to be the biggest and your plant foot just land right next to the ball. Next to the ball. Follow through. All right, uh, should I move it up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, move I'll move it up five yards. Move it up. I told Claire before this that she didn't need her gloves. I don't shoot that hard. She's scared. And remember, I haven't warmed up. So this is the first shot for me. All right. This is why I'm not a soccer player. Do it again. That was, that was, that was good. Yeah! Ah, I scored! It only took me two tries. That's better than me. Claire was going easy on me, though. Pressure's on. 100,000 here. Ooh, that had a little curve to it. Ooh. These are a goalie's worst nightmare. Yeah, goalie's worst nightmare. Sweating. Oh, what a Diving. save. Stop for Claire 80. That was a great save, Claire. Um, Cindy Bloomquist is actually our PK taker and Sarah Civic. They both are like kind of our go-to players. Go-to players. Well, let's see if I can be a go-to player here out of the broadcasters. <laughs> PK time. Oh! What a save. <laughs> Good save. <laughs> Mac Defensive Player of the Week right there. So you're the soccer guru. How would you rate my performance out here? Um, I'd give it an 8. An 8? Eight. 8 out of 10. Why not a 10? Because um, you're slow to start, but slow to start. I, I, think, I think if you had a little more practice, you'd get to a 10. Finish strong. Just like last week for you guys against Youngstown State, slow start, finish strong, overtime win. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about. Exactly. Kicks with Lonnie Smith. Lonnie, thanks so much for the time and best of luck the rest of the year. Thank you. That wraps up this week's edition of Z360. Tune in next week as we mic up Akron football assistant head coach and offensive line coach John Peterson. You won't want to miss it. I'm David Suntup for GoZips.com.